is Bridgman not good for beginners? Well, apparently, some people believe it's not, and I strongly disagree with that. In fact, he was the first artist I ever studied from, and I might go so far as to say that he's one of the best to start with. So in this video, I want to share with you why I disagree, and how you can maximize Bridgman too, as a beginner. So if you don't want to miss that demonstration, you're going to want to stick around to the end. And so, without further ado, let's get it. So why do I disagree with the notion that Bridgman is not good for beginners? I believe that with that comes the presumption that you can't handle or understand the basic information in there. Information that is in fact essential for beginners. For example, one of the basic general rules that the body is seven and a half heads tall. This is not a difficult concept amongst others. The worst that could happen is you make a few bad drawings, which we all do no matter the experience. And there is absolutely no reason to be afraid of putting out a few bad drawings. You gotta do it to get to the good stuff. Which brings me to the point of Bridgman and what he's trying to do with his drawings. He's not trying to create pretty art, even though a lot of it does look good. But what he's actually trying to do is communicate important information about the body. And he's willing to exaggerate elements of that reality in order to communicate these points effectively. Then you can take that knowledge and information and apply it to something that's a bit more aesthetic. And right now I'm gonna go over some of the basics in here. Now if you like the way that sounds, I've got an affiliate link to this bad boy in the description below. Now, how does one start to learn about the figure in general? You can say it starts with getting a basic understanding of what's going on from the outside in terms of the general forms, the rhythms, and so on. And from there, you go on to dissect the anatomy. You see, what Bridgman does is he divides the body into its most dominant sections, each of which are represented by more basic shapes that are easier to comprehend. These basic forms also do a great job of illustrating the dominant rhythms. So if you look here, you see it goes from here in the back to here in the front, to the back, to the front. These are also known as S curves most often because you see it flows like an S. Now I'm going to show you the process for creating these studies. So if you like what you see so far, be sure you hit that like button. You could also subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you do not Miss an upload. Now, let's get started. Now, where do we begin? With our reference in hand, we can start by using some searching lines. These are marks that aren't quite precise, but they're close enough for us to then hone in on what the actual line drawing will be ultimately. And once we're confident with that, we can lighten it up if necessary and then begin to do our finer lines on top. Now what I'm basically doing here, at least for now, is copying the reference. Now some people will say do not just copy the drawings in the book, but some of these same people will recommend tracing as an exercise. Granted, at times it's not that simple. What's actually important is to avoid simply going through the motions. To give you an example, it's like lifting weights. Going through the motions of lifting a weight is meaningless if the weight isn't heavy enough to produce sufficient intensity for growth. I'll reiterate, the pressure on yourself has to be intense enough to produce growth. Do you understand? It's the same thing for drawing. The exercise you do has to provide sufficient mental pressure for development. Rather than just going through the motions when you copy, pay extra attention to what it is you're doing and why. What you are doing effectively is retreading the same steps as the artist you're referencing, in this case Bridgman, without going through the more intense labor of simplifying reality itself. Bridgman already did that for you. So all you need to do is take the steps he did and try to understand why. It is for this reason, amongst many more, that copying can be an effective way of doing things as long as you make the conscious effort to understand the reasoning. That, and it's difficult to expect someone to understand the thing fully that they're not capable of even copying. It seems to be a stage that most, if not all, artists go through before learning to reiterate the subject in their own visual language with any kind of confidence and authority. As you draw, you should be thinking about why the structure is what it is, why the rhythms flow the way that they do, why certain lines overlap others to create the sense of anatomical depth, and do your best to internalize it. And most important of all, it's okay to take your time. 
Studies aren't a thing that you need to bang out quickly in this case. There's no deadline. Take the time to process everything as you do it. If you're not taking your time and you rush through things, you're going to leave progress on the table. Rushing through exercises and simply going through the motions is precisely how people fall into that trap of needless repetition. They assume that more is better. But just because you're doing something more frequently doesn't mean that the time you spend doing it is of quality. I would say put in as much quality time as you can get away with without burning yourself out. The amount of time you can put in before a burnout may vary from person to person. But hard work is the only way to get yourself as far as you can. And that means pushing yourself beyond what's comfortable at times. Do not confuse discomfort with burnout. Now back to Bridgman, what exactly is going on here? If you observe the style, you notice that there are a lot of angular lines being used here. And when I say angular, I mean a lot of straight lines and a lot of sharp curves, not so many soft curves. On one hand, he's using this approach to exaggerate certain plane changes and rhythms with greater emphasis. This really helps to drive home the nature of what he's trying to demonstrate here. And on the other hand, simplifying the curves of your subject into straighter lines can help you with measurements. It's a lot easier to compare the relationship between two straighter lines than two curved lines. So when you're checking for proportions and angles, it's far easier to make those measurements this way. This is also a method I picked up from Charles Barg, whom I mentioned in a previous video where I discussed all of the books I recommend for artists. So if you haven't seen that video already, you may want to check that out. Now, what am I doing here? Simply put, I'm adding tone to help the drawings pop more. With mirror line drawings, it can be difficult to see and understand the weight of your work and what's actually working for you. Being able to block the silhouette makes the pose appear much stronger and you're better able to appreciate the structure and rhythm that's been captured. Looking at the reference, you'll note that certain parts of the body are better defined than others. So to respect the original drawing, I'm attempting to draw focus to the parts that are well defined while keeping the less defined areas more vague. You see it often in paintings where areas of focus are defined with harder edges while areas of less focus might be blurred or have a degree of blending or bleeding into the background. Now, just to change it up a bit, I've decided to go with a light background for the other poses. No real reason other than to keep it visually interesting for myself. Studies can sometimes feel mundane, so if you find ways to make it more interesting for yourself, power to you. Another thing to note is that these drawings are relatively simple compared to a lot of what you'll find in the book. If you know what to pay attention to, it does a great job of easing you into the more difficult aspects of anatomy. And as you improve, you can take it upon yourself to render his drawings more fully. That is how you can eventually demonstrate your more complete understanding of the anatomy. And I'll be doing more videos on that in the future. So if you like this video, you're definitely going to want to stick around for that. And while you're at it, let me know in the comments below what has your experience been with learning anatomy so far? Has it been easy for you? Has it been difficult? Are you stuck? What resources have you been using? What books? Let me know in the comments below and I'm sure everybody else who's reading through them will benefit from that as well. And now we are about to come up on the end of this little demonstration. At which point I'm going to show you why I like to use these toned backgrounds to really emphasize the silhouette in my studies. And if you're wondering why I'm toning the background the way that I am and not using selections, it's because I like the traditional feel of it. What can I say? <laughs> so now let's move on to the finale. So here we've got the line drawing. And like I said before, it can be difficult to really appreciate what you've got going on if all you've got is lines. So when we turn on the toned background, you can see how these silhouettes pop out a lot more. Better yet, if you take away the lines after putting on the toned background, look how powerful the silhouettes are. See all that character in these poses? And that's all because you got powerful structure and rhythm. The drawings themselves were still quite incomplete and rough. I mean, they were just anatomy studies. And yet, these silhouettes are quite solid. So with that, I hope you guys understand 
why abridgment is so powerful for beginners and what you could be missing out on. So if you like this book, there's a link to it down in the description below. And if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future videos that got coming out soon, and hit that bell for notifications. Until next time, peace.